Welcome back to Fry Minis. I'm Eric, and today we're going to take a look at folk horror, a horror genre featured in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. All right, so this one is built around spooky uh, traditional things. So witches and forests and animals and things that live out in the wild. Sounds pretty cool. Let's take a look. Full horror adventures involve traditions, beliefs, and perceptions that are passed down through the generations and take terrifying twists. For those who ascribe to hidden traditions, sacrifices to strange gods, or placations to lurking monsters are everyday events. For outsiders, though, these practices reveal the subjectivity of normalcy, societal truth, and taboos. Full horror explores fears of isolation, superstition, paranoia, and lost truths. Seemingly idyllic communities rural reclusiveness, forgotten traditions, and naturalistic cults all frequently feature in folk horror adventures, particularly as they contrast with what majorities consider the status quo. In folk horror tales, characters often discover that their beliefs aren't as universally held as they assumed, and those beliefs provide no defense against those who reject them. In such stories, characters discover their perception of the way the world works is in the minority as those around them practice traditions beyond their understanding. Alternatively, characters might realize their own beliefs are lies as others reveal unsettling truths. Communities that ascribe to the traditions of folk horror stories are rarely tolerant of non-believers. Outsiders might be given a chance to adopt the community's ways, but otherwise are considered heretics or corrupting elements. Assuredly, their ancient traditions have ways of excising blasphemers. This is the one where we're going to get into the rural kind of stuff that can really freak you out if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Consider the following genre tropes when creating your folk horror domain. Strange and potentially dangerous traditions flourish in isolated or otherwise private communities. This might mean a rural village, a lost civilization, or cabal within a larger community. A community's surroundings often influence its beliefs. Their traditions might be naturalistic or relate to some sort of ancient lore. Art, symbol, tools, celebrations, and other trappings of belief help make a community's traditions more specific and eerie. Community members typically hide their beliefs, whether physically obscuring them or by manipulating others in power. Communities and folk horror stories often serve as a grim mirror of some aspect of accepted society. Beliefs highlighted in folk horror stories might or might not be true. Folk horror communities often have dramatic ways of using outsiders or purging non-believers. It's a cult. We're talking about cults. Get out. Eerie traditions and unnatural alliances with monsters fill folk horror tales. When something's been normalized over generations, even the strangest practices and most dangerous beings might be accepted as part of society. Does the community in your folk horror domain live alongside deadly monsters? Does a regional faith consider an obvious abomination their god? Does a group make offerings to placate imaginary spirits of the field? Any monster might feature in your folk horror domain. It's acceptance of such creatures and the trappings of willing servitude that provide resources of dread. The full core monster table suggests just a few creatures suited to this genre. All right, we've got another short list of creatures uh, sorted low CR to high CR. MM is Monster Manual, VGR is Vanrickens Guide to Ravenloft. Myconid Adult, Awakened Tree, Cult Fanatic, Will-O-Wisp, Green Hag, Werewolf, Shambling Mound, Body Taker Plant, Jing Shi. A lot of those uh, look like they have alternative appearances. They might be able to blend in with uh, regular type stuff. So I think we get a lot of creep factor from that. Folk horror villains are manipulative, leading others to follow traditions they might not even entirely understand. They zealously defend their faith and community and might eagerly seek new initiates or dangerous blasphemers. Our folk horror villains list is a D8. A secluded temple's high priest who needs to find the perfect sacrifice before the annual festival. An Arrhenius that appears when youngsters speak a rhyme into a darkened mirror. A night hag that dwells in the dreams of those who drink a special lavender and ergo tea. A shapeshifter that takes on the appearance of the last person it fed upon. A wicker giant that animates during the new moon, collecting sacrifices and punishing the unwary. A village of people who behave in archaic ways so they don't enrage an ancient, lingering ghost. A treant who demands living limbs to replace the branches of trees cleared by a town's construction. 
a protective giant made from the corpses of deceased villagers. We're getting real rural real quick. A full quarter domain's Dark Lord has been consumed by the traditions, land, or rituals they embody. They might not fully understand their own beliefs, though, causing them to fail in their duties or cause rights to spin out of control. Such Dark Lords remain devoted, though, desperately trying to prove themselves or satisfy the object of their belief. The full core torments list is a D6. The Dark Lord can't commune with the spirit they worship. They offer even greater sacrifices in hopes of proving their worthiness. The Dark Lord constantly, uncontrollably speaks prophecies. The Dark Lord is haunted by the judgmental spirits of their predecessors. The Dark Lord is the only one who adheres to an ancient faith and desperately works to convert non-believers. The Dark Lord seeks to transform their body into a vessel or gate for the subject of their belief. The Dark Lord knows the community's beliefs are false, but keeps up the facade to maintain power. I really like the idea here of uh, them being almost a charlatan. Uh, and I really, really like the idea of their their belief being real, but they failing to stay in touch with it. I think that's a really interesting angle. Folk horror stories often take place in isolated or rural areas, but they could be set anywhere insular communities thrive or traditions stagnate. Another D6 table for the folk horror settings. A countryside with stretches of hay fields, colorful barns, and perpetually smiling residents. An island floating in the air where ground worshippers dream of the lands below. A telepathic collective that townsfolk join by ingesting a rare fungus. Tunnels where the sewer dwellers assure that the blood of the city ever flows. Glacier that residents never leave lest the icy spirits haunting their community escape. Rival villagers engage in a private age-old war. That glacier one stands out to me. That's kind of cool. The whole group, the whole town sacrifices themselves to stay there to keep the bad guy uh, trapped. I think that's a cool approach. The sites of folk horror adventures embody a community's traditions or what shelters it from society at large. A D6 for the folk horror adventure sites. A seemingly deserted chapel that has been burnt down and rebuilt a thousand times. A hag's hut that stands atop a growing hill of rotten sweets. A whispering pit once plugged by a monolith covered in prayer scrolls. A field where paths grow in corridor-like patterns leading to a ruin at the center. A mansion built incorporating a stone circle, a cavern where the glowing bones of an otherworldly being jut from the wall. I mean, hag's hut on a pile of candy. You can't do better than that. That's perfect. Full horror stories often involve outsiders or an unwitting new member of the community discovering a unsettling practices. Hmm. Okay, I think we found another one. Folk Horror Plots is a D8 list. Recover a missing villager who ran away to escape the local cult. Hunt down the monster blamed for causing a blight, a unicorn meant to serve as a sacrifice. Discover why anyone entering the city on horseback is imprisoned and sentenced to death. Help a cult summon a fiend to combat an impending greater evil. Defeat a violent hag who's protected by everyone in town and called Grandmother. Escape an estate after the residents adopt the party and refuse to let them leave. Learn why the characters bear uncanny resemblances to the founders of an underground village. Slay a dragon and, in doing so, prove a character is the prophesized chosen one. So first, the characters looking like the founders. I'm thinking of uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Easy. Uh, but that last one that the one of the players is actually the chosen one secret person and if you make it to where it's like the uh, like the shy one or whatever in the group i think that that could be a really fun twist that could be a lot a lot of fun i think folk horror here has a uh, a lot of potential a lot of opportunity to get kind of creepy although as somebody who grew up in a small town uh, some of these might seem a little too real so just be careful who you're trying to play these with but otherwise, this section has done a great job of building up uh, creepy, uh, living in the cornfields kind of spook fest. So what kind of folk horror story would you like to play? Let me know in the comments below. Stay tuned for more Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft coverage here on Fry Minis. And thank you for watching.